Linock huts, I've got um, some portraits I've done of myself, some portraits I've done of my family, I've done pieces of artwork from Mad, Mad Muse, which is um, a um, gallery in Belgium. It's like a particular book that is like inks, you can sometimes do the patterns and, spl and splodge. As, as water. Into Art is a visual arts organisation working with people with learning disabilities practising as artists in the Into Art studio. We have a studio in Clapham and we also have an archive there. The archive helps me by um, to inspire me just to do even more artwork and just push myself. Do you want it? Um, I think that's what that's the actual one I'm actually okay. talking about, I think. In the archive, the artwork is safe and tidy, covered with tissue paper to make sure they have not spoiled the artwork. The, the day and year, the title, and who the piece of artwork by is written on the back so that the artist has an up-to-date has an up-to-date record to be kept in the archive space. The folders are labelled so they can be put. The most recent piece of artwork the artist has done in, in the folders so they can pull out for future exhibitions. Practically speaking, we had to build some um, archive space where we could start to organise the work and get it out of portfolios and start to look at it all, um, start to think about how we could catalogue and database the work so that we could find it in the future. In archive, I have learned doing yeah. work yeah. and dated each, pe each pieces of recent art with my themes. I have scheduled with my work and notes to archive them and filing. We work with a photographer um, yeah. to come in to photograph mm. a selection of artworks that each artist had made, starting from when they first um, started working with Into Art through to present day. That meant that the artists were making the choices over which artworks were going to be digitised. And that is a really interesting process for the artists to go through, to think about which pieces of work they value and why. In terms of the field we're working in, where memory may be an issue in terms of learning stability, for people to have, it's um, a resource that we've identified is really important for artists to take that next step. Right, all my artwork is like all that all oh, friends okay. here. Um, I think what's been really important about Tate is that it's it's had a commitment to the professional development of artists from into art in terms of their progression over the years. Right. What do archivists spend most of their time doing? Archivists spend their time sort of doing three main things. We spend a lot of time collecting material because we're a collecting archive at the Tate. Um, and then we spend a lot of time preserving and documenting the material. And then the third aspect is we spend a lot of time giving access to the material. At the moment, a lot of people don't think about their archive when they're working on it. And so we really only deal with the people around them after the artist has died. But we are changing 
now that a lot of people are working in digital material, we need to start working with them a lot earlier in the process. This is a question I always want to ask artists. If you archive something, does it make you want to be more organised in the way you work? So do you sort of think about it and go, oh, I could put that in that part of my archive? Um, no. No, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> no one thinks about the archivists. Something that's really unique about the working relationship that we have with Tate is that it's developed over a long period of time, mm -hmm. that we've had an opportunity to listen very deeply to each other mm -hmm. and to act on the learning that we've shared. The way you've accessed the archives, worked with curatorial colleagues, with learning colleagues, with digital colleagues, I think all those ways of working make goals that are strategic for Tate about being open, local, diverse, artist-led, other, other goals that they really make those mean something and be alive. The archive helps me to do more by launching my work, to have, to, to have events and shows, to present the talks about my research. The events are really important in terms of sharing the Internet Archive, the artwork and the research and it's an opportunity for the people and the artists to present themselves and the work that they're producing. But also there's a generosity I think by all of the artists to kind of, you know, to hand over the work to an audience to have a conversation about what it is, you know, what underpins the image that they've made. Hello, I'm Clifton Wright and I'm an Intel artist. We have made a film about the Intel archive and looking at different stages of artwork. I am looking forward to, art, to showing you the film and I appreciate any questions you have for me later on. My name is Christian Overland. I started in InterArt last year. Where is this film? When did you start InterArt? Years ago. For an artist to consciously create an archive um, as part of their working process is quite unusual and it's really exciting to see that. And it seems that these archives they use not only to show their creative process but also uh, to inspire themselves.